Dan, I'm so excited. <laughs> Is this by faith? No, 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 I'm being serious. OMG, man. I'm, I'm super excited. Okay. Let's Such try. Fun. Ooh. Let's oh. try to see if, like, okay, that's like Should I? Am I too relaxed now? Should I? Welcome to my channel, House of Hosting Heaven. My name is Rutendo Melody Gambiza. Gambiza. And this is... Shono Patimo the Gambiza. My wonderful husband. <laughs> so today, Tim introduced me in church and he didn't call me his lovely wife. He just called me his wife, so I'm not feeling very well. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't call me his wonderful, beautiful wife. <laughs> but anyways, guys. Um, we wanted to pop in and um, kind of, you know, have a chat with you, have a conversation with you um, around prayer. And I think what we want to do with this video is we want to just let you in um, on our personal spiritual journeys and kind of share with you testimonies that we have experienced um, through some of the prayers that we shared last week. So as some of you would know, we have been having somewhat of a prayer marathon. And uh, what we've been doing is that we've been sharing uh, prayer prayer points with anchor words, um, and we really want to encourage you to take those prayer uh, prayer points, pray them over your life, pray them over your journey, um, over your families, over your relationships, maybe over your um, career journey, um, or maybe just over your spiritual journey. Right? Okay, we've got a weird bug which doesn't want us to be great here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we want you guys to take those prayer sessions and really invest 10 minutes a day to pray um, for your personal journeys as well. Um, but I wanted to just share, come here and share stories, you know, about our own personal journeys around those anchor words. So um, I will put links um, in the description box below uh, for those uh, prayers that we've been doing since Monday. I encourage you to spend some time and pray them over yourself. So yeah, welcome to the channel, Tim. Thank you very much. It's an honor. I've been trying to be here for the longest time, but apparently you need to put a ring on it. So hey. now there's a ring. And I am here. <laughs> they must commit, girls. They must commit before they come on YouTube. I'm going to go first. Um, okay, so the first anchor word uh, that we used on Monday's prayer session was direction. And um, I wanted to just you know, share a story, uh, a personal story, story that um, that happened to me a couple of years ago um, where I really felt the, the importance of, of, of praying for direction. We love your stories. Uh, thank you, baby. <laughs> so it was, um, it was just after undergrad. Um, I just finished my undergrad um, degree program and um, the intent is, had always been to finish school and to go back home. Um, and for, for those who don't know, I am actually originally from Zimbabwe, currently based in South Africa. And so I had come to South Africa for university. And soon after finishing my undergrad, I was like, I'm done. Thank you very much uh, for investing in my education. South Africa, it's been good, you know, doing business with you. So I intended to go back to Zimbabwe. Um, and um, as I was getting ready to go back home for the final time, I literally would just be coming back home for co coming back to South Africa for graduation. Um, the Lord um, gave me a word through um, a woman that, that I really you know respect and, and who really is she's more of like a mother in the faith, you know, um, someone that I've walked my journey with um, for a while. And she said, you know, I sense that God is speaking to me and God is saying that I should release a word over your life and I should let you know that if you go to Zimbabwe, everything that I have aborted, everything that I have, um, everything that I have deposited in you will be aborted because it's not yet time for you to be in Zimbabwe. And she actually also released a word um, and said it will all start in South Africa. 
so um, there I was you know having made all the preparations that I poss possibly could to stay in South Africa and I was very ready to start afresh in Zimbabwe I personally believe that my journey um, corporate wise would have been easier if I had gone to Zimbabwe uh, in that season uh, you know there was a plan I had a plan you know things were laid out but I um, you know I really um, I really felt I really felt God on that word um, and so that word is the reason why I'm still in South Africa 10 years later um, because I obeyed that word and it wasn't always easy but when I thought when I when I would remember that word the word that gave me direction um, the word that set me on this path um, I'm super grateful that I say yes to that word of direction uh, and I wouldn't have met my husband hey hey imagine hey somebody imagine. I wouldn't have uh, been able to accomplish everything that, that we have accomplished with Hosting Heaven. Um, I, I wouldn't be where I am right now if I had not said yes to that, um, to that direction. And so I remember specifically in that season, I was praying. I was praying for direction. Um, I was like, God, you have to confirm this word. You have to um, give me the peace of mind that, that I need. To obey this word and God gave me that peace of mind in that confirmation so Beautiful. so yeah for me that's where that anchor word came from it's something that I've personally experienced in my own journey yeah so uh, you want to talk to us about destiny which was our second anchor word for uh, the second day of prayer sure thank you mm -hmm. I hope you've been joining the prayers uh, she has shared the link uh, below if you missed out on any of the days um, I think that prayer is you want to put God first and you want God to guide you so that you don't have to walk some parts twice, sometimes three times because you have to now go back and then, you know, go the right direction. But I think that, you know, for me, if I were to talk about how prayers of destiny have shaped my life, I would go back to a time when I was, in fact, it's funny how they're linked these prayer points because I was directionless at the point mm -hmm. and someone who is um, not walking in purpose in the direction of fulfilling their destiny is, is directionless so I was directionless and I was I knew there was so much potential in me and I was in university and I was you know struggling uh, third year in third year mm -hmm. um, and you know my dad sent me a book on purpose and he said, may this book help you to fulfill your purpose. And from that day, I began to pray prayers that sounded something like, I know there's more in God. I know there's more in God for me wow. concerning my life, concerning my destiny, right? Mm. And strangely enough, things begin, begin to happen. Things begin to shape up. Things begin to take a course that when you look back, I remember the, the, the group of friends I had at the time, all of them left the country. Literally, it was just me, church folk, and God. Like, God literally cleared the slate for me. And I believe it was really through those prayers. And sometimes I'd be praying in the Spirit. I wouldn't even know what I was saying. Yeah. But prayers of destiny took me from a place where I was abusing substances. I, was, I wasn't an alcoholic, but I, I was like a party animal. To a place where I could actually mentor people and, and pastor people and, and help people, you know, not only to be saved, but to live for God, to, to have direction and purpose in their lives. So I, I know countless times, I mean, there is even a time when, you know, I was faced with an opportunity to move to Canada and it came a moment where um, I, I now had to make the decision. And I already knew God was calling me um, to, to ministry. And, 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 you know, the people who were, the stakeholders who were involved in that decision said to me, don't worry, you can go do ministry in Canada, right? If God has called you, God has called you, you can go do ministry anyway. That is not true. Your destiny is location specific. For her, it was to start in South Africa. For myself too, it was to start in South Africa. God knew my wife was here. God knew what he was telling my wife. I hadn't even met her. Had I just taken that plane and gone to Canada and said, oh, I can fulfill my destiny in Canada. Who knows where I would be today? So you want to be careful when you are really allowing God to talk to you regarding your destiny. When you pray about your destiny, be prepared to obey and to do whatever God is asking you to do. And 
99% of the time, it's not going to make sense. It's going to be uncomfortable. But in the long run, you'll be like, geez, I'm glad I followed God. So, yeah. Sure. That is my mini story session. Oh, wow. So good. So good. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, hey. Destiny, like, what I picked up from that is... Destiny is location specific. Absolutely. Sure. You can't just fulfill your destiny anywhere. Yeah. No, it doesn't work like that. Abraham, leave this place, go to a certain place. Mm. So, direction and destiny are inextricably linked. Mm. So good. Wow. Um, the third anchor word was dominion. Um, and really what we're praying for was, you know, um, just a strong hand over the enemy, whether it's in, in the areas where you have been struggling with or in the area of your health, um, in the area of maybe fruitfulness. You know, we just we're just praying that you know the Lord would just really strengthen your hand so it can subdue in the place where He has uh, planted you. Um, and I specifically remember a season, babe, uh, when when I was um, I was in school. Um, I was just finishing up the last few years um, of my undergrad, and um, I remember having applied for the renewal of my passport, right? Because I had a three-year passport, um, three-year passport as I was entering into South Africa, but I had a four-year degree program. So after the third year had finished, I had to re to apply again for my passport and my my student visa to be renewed. Um, it was one of the most excruciatingly painful seasons of my journey, because what should have taken about three months took about two and a half to three years for that visa to come out um, and I'll tell you that in that season you know where I was trying to apply for my passport the correct way the right way the God way the the the, the legal way you know <laughs> there were so many opportunities for me to just look for an easy alternative look for an alternative that involved compromise look for an alternative that that involved using the arm of my flesh to work out a solution. For what I believe now, um, you know, in hindsight, was God orchestrated to work on growing my faith, you know, to work on growing my trust for God. Um, and so I spent about three years with no visa. I would go home um, using my, I'll go home using the, the receipt that I had used to apply for my, for my visa. And at no point in time did I ever face any difficulties on the borders, um, even though it had taken three years for you know the South African um, system to, to to finally produce um, my, my my passport. Um, I saw God do miracles. Uh, you know, I saw God give me job opportunities with you know with papers that were not enough i saw god um you know allow me to open up certain like maybe certain accounts which needed paperwork with no paperwork it was it was just three years of seeing that god indeed is able to be your qualification he's able to be mm, that so good. um he's able to be that qualification that is necessary that that paper that's necessary. So I want to I want to encourage somebody that's watching, um, that probably is a need um, in need of God's hand in their lives. I want you to know that you have dominion over what whatever situation God has trusted you with Amen. in that season. You know, some of you you're, you're dealing with diseases. Some of you you're dealing with uh, you know systems that completely refuse you know to just bow down to you. You know, you, you, you're you dealing with um, so many different things where you need dominion. I want to encourage you to pray the prayer of dominion because truly, um, I saw the hand of God. Not only did God prove to me that he was capable of being the, the person that allowed me to enter into rooms I was not qualified to enter into, allowed me to pass through gates I was not qualified to enter into, but he also ultimately gave me dominion over that system and he allowed me to get my permit. And I always say this, babe, the second permit that I applied for soon after those three years of waiting was mm. super easy. It was so quick that a lot of my friends could not believe it. They kept asking me what I had done. Um, because for something that should have taken about three months, I think it probably took about a couple of months. 
why because there had been so many so many years of just praying for that system you know trusting god for release praying that the, the paperwork would be sorted, praying that my, my paperwork would fall in the right hands. So I do believe that um, when God gives you an opportunity to pray over something so that you can dominate it, it might take long, but once you have dominion, it's almost like you have dominion for yourself, for your siblings, for your family. You know, it's like you, you when you pray over something and when you break it, it is broken indeed. Hey. You know? Powerful. So, so that's that's my testimony um, in the area. One of my many testimonies in the area of dominion that I wanted to share. Um, so, if you have any visa prayer points, visa related issues, hey. please come to the woman of God for prayer. Hey. She's an authority in that area. <laughs> wow. Hey. Wow. Wow. I won't really call myself an authority, but yeah, I I I've seen the hand of God in that area. Yeah, the fourth um, anchor word that we were working with was um, distance, you know. Do you, want, do you want to go for it? No, you are uh, more than anchor, <laughs> more than capable. So distance, we were talking about um, distance being an anchor word and just kind of, you know, praying for God to separate us from uh, unhealthy appetites, unhealthy environments, um, separate us from um, unhealthy relationships, uh, separate us from anything that is toxic, that is standing in the way of us and um our 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 destiny um and i remember a season um a season in my journey uh when i was in high school i was still in high school and um it was the last few years of of, of me being in high school i was at a girl's school and um you know i had been um through the season where i felt like i was kind of um connecting with certain people that were not really supportive of the, the version of me that I wanted to become and that's the exact same season where I really feel and believe that God started separating me um, from the crowd mm. you know I really felt like an outcast in that season but I just really would feel God separating me from from, from the crowd and just wanting me in, in places where he would speak to me or where he would allow me to listen in on myself mm. if that makes sense that's really the, the time when I really started spending time with the Holy Spirit I didn't even know that he was called the Holy Spirit, but I would, um, I was still a Catholic girl, and I would go to the grotto, and I would just pray, there was such a hunger, that God was breathing inside of my spirit to pray, um, and in that season, um, I really felt a, a leading to pray for God to separate me from anything that was standing in the way of him and, and, and me fully, uh, fully creating the relationship that he wanted me to create. Mm. So this season where this young Catholic girl was, you know, most of his life spent, you know, just like really hanging around with the, the, the most troublesome people in high school, you know, being one of the most troublesome names on, 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 on every list, you know, God really just started separating me and distancing me um, from, from, from certain people, certain groups, um, at certain places, I just, I just really started uh, desiring to spend more time with God. Mm. And I believe that that's really the time that, that I really started hosting him. And I, did, I didn't have a word for it then. I didn't know who, who it was was really calling me, but I spent a lot of time in prayer. Um, and so I just really want to encourage you to, to, to take time um, and have a look at that prayer for distancing. Because... Um, as you go through the journey of life, you will realize that that distance is going to need to be renewed over and over again in mm. every season. Mm. You're going to need to distance yourself from some very toxic relationships, uh, very toxic friendships, sometimes even very toxic work environments where mm. God is really just giving you the strength to, um, to have the courage and the bravery to leave one job and trust him for the next. Mm. You know, um, so that's a very powerful prayer. Once again, in the description box below, um, we'll be using the anchor word of, of distancing, mm. of distance. Uh, the next one is dusting off all ashes. Mm. Beautiful. I want to touch on distance. It's very relevant. Um, check your Bible. We see distance operating with Moses, mm. goes into the wilderness. Jesus, Abraham, Joseph, countless people. God will will separate you to prepare you yeah. and and you can't stay in certain environments and expect to fulfill your destiny at the same time so like we are saying these things are so intertwined mm -hmm. that you you want to be sure that you know you are praying on all fronts and making sure that God is creating that distance that is needed 
between you and sometimes your past, you and toxic people, sometimes it's even family members who you need to love from afar. Uh, don't quote me on that. Let's, let's go ahead. Dusting off all ashes. Mm -hmm. That is very interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, um, part of um, post-traumatic stress disorder is where you still identify with your past and what you went through more than the reality of your present mm -hmm. or the prospects of your future. Mm -hmm. So you find yourself tied to the old when God wants to usher you into the new. Um, and many times if you study even trauma victims, if you study people who've been through a lot in life, something as simple as a wardrobe change, and I'm not endorsing retail therapy, but a wardrobe change can literally change your outlook because you are dusting off the ashes of an old season. Some of you look too much like your past to step into your future. It is now time to dust off the ashes. And when I look at my own life, there are things that I used to identify with for such a long time. I remember when, when you know, I, I was in the world, I used to say, I'll never stop doing this, I'll never stop doing that. And I was an advocate, you know, for these things. And when I now came into the kingdom, there was almost like a guilt, a label over me, like, ah, you, you know, you are, you, you've assigned yourself to these vices. You, you have committed your life to these things. And I realized that until I stop identifying myself with those habits, with those nicknames, for some of us it's nicknames. Mm -hmm. There are names which I told people, you can't call me that anymore. Mm -hmm. Because it identified with a certain part of me that I no longer wanted to identify sure. with. Okay. So, you know, coming into my future, stepping into my future in ministry, stepping into my future as a husband, stepping into my future, required me to stop identifying with who I was. Mm -hmm. and, and the prayer for dusting off ashes really allows you to step into your future without looking or smelling like your past. Mm -hmm. You want to be sure that even if the enemy decides like Pharaoh that he's going to come after you, that his dogs will lose scent of you mm -hmm. because you no longer smell like your past. Wow. So dusting off your ashes is a crucial aspect of stepping into your destiny. I always say to my wife, you want to look like your future. You want your future to let you in when you knock at the door. You want to live prophetically, dress prophetically, smile prophetically, even if you're in a difficult season. Because those ashes, they are trying to stop you from stepping into the reality that God has in store for you. Oh, so good. So good. And some of you have um, literally disqualified yourself from your future because of your past. Mm. Um, you, whatever has happened, uh, the shame that you've experienced. You know, we could be talking to um, women that have, um, you know, maybe you've you you have a child from your past. Um, maybe you have done things that you are absolutely not proud of. Some of you have. Um, you have you have lost children you know you have aborted children some of you have been through some things that a lot of women would um, would struggle a lot to forgive themselves um, from some of you have stayed too long in abusive relationships that have completely morphed you into different uh, people that you can't even recognize yourself right now you have you 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 finally had the courage to leave but you've entered into this new season with a lot of shame and this shame for the weight of your past is stopping you from fully becoming all that God called you to be. Some of you have a word for other women. Some of you have um, teachings for other women. Some of you have been called to even speak to other women to equip them. But because of the shame of your past, mm -hmm. you continue to pull yourself back. This is one of the prayers that I want you to pray for, your, for yourself. You know, it's a 10-minute prayer literally where you're just standing um, and touching and agreeing that, you know, God is really going to uh, give you beauty for, for those ashes, that the season where you were in a furnace, when God was really preparing you, um, when he when he was breaking off any, you know, was burning off anything that does not look like what he wants you to be, in that season, whatever he did in that season, will not, it will, you will not look like that season. No. You will not look like that season, but you will, you will truly be a new creation in Christ. And as you step into your destiny, you will step in confidently, knowing very well that there is nothing that has happened in your life 
that God would not have permitted had it not been part of the journey. Mm -hmm. So dust off those ashes, you know, um, develop a new spring in your step, mm -hmm. get excited because God has qualified you just as you are. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter what you've been through, doesn't matter what you've gone through, doesn't matter what you have done, you are completely irrevocably loved mm -hmm. in Christ. Mm -hmm. You are complete in Him who is the head of all principality and power. Come on, come on. So, so, so good. So good. And the prayer for open doors is such a powerful prayer. I remember a season, baby, in my, in my, in my journey. My husband was now in my life as a friend. Um, and I, I was, remember the season when I was looking for a job. Mm. So I just left my job by faith. And I was trusting God that God would open up doors for me um, to, um, to find another job. In my head, I had said, you know, Surely, with all these prayers that, that I've made, you know, in the next couple of months, I'm going to have a job. What should have been a couple of months at the maximum, of, you know, looking for a job, ended up being about six months, you know, looking for a job. But one of the things that I learned in that season, babe, um, was really the fact that in many instances, the doors that we desire for God to open, God wants to reveal to us that they are way so many more doors that he can open for us mm. because in that in that season i was applying for a job um and while i was applying for a job it became so difficult to, to get a job in that season mm. that i had to create job opportunities for myself mm. Mm. um and as i was in this season god started opening up interesting opportunities for me to actually be to be self-employed mm. Um, and to contract my services mm. uh, to different companies. Mm. Um, and so I remember that season I was doing a, um, some, some training work. Um, I was, you know, doing some books for a couple of small businesses. Um, all of which was um, such a powerful experience for me because it was God revealing to me that sometimes you're looking for one big door to open but mm. god is well capable of opening so many um, a few small doors mm. that still achieve the same purpose mm. um but apart I, I, I think for me what i just learned was that god is well capable of providing mm. and is well capable of opening doors into rooms that you least expect and is well capable of doing it with his own methods mm. Um, and so I want to encourage you, if you're in a season where you are in need for doors to open, whether it could be in corporate, maybe you need to get into a new level, you know, you need, you're in need of promotion, um, or you are in a space where you just feel that you need to, you have outgrown your current environment. Um, I pray that this, um, this prayer is going to, as we touch and agree and stand in faith together, that it's going to really usher you into your next level um, and, 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 and take away the limitations of what you think that door should look like mm. because God is capable of opening multiple doors that can still do the exact same thing that you desire to happen with that door that you are um, that you're looking for mm. so don't limit God allow God to be God and allow God to work out his neck in the in the way that he wants to work out mm, his man. Mm, mm. You know, Jesus says, I have set an open door before you mm. and no man can shut it. Mm. One of my favorite scriptures. So beautiful. But anyway, thank you. Amazing. So powerful. Awesome. So I'm super happy that my husband joined me for this session today. <laughs> um, I literally, you know, we're coming from church, our first service of the year. We had such an amazing time with, with our local church. Um, and we miss them so much. Yeah. Um, and we just got home. We're kind of tired a little, but he took time to just come and be a part of the session. So please thank him for me in the comment section below. And do let me know if you would like him to come over again, <laughs> um, uh, you know, very soon and do some sessions with us. But um, thank you so much for watching and um, definitely connect to last week's prayer sessions and connect to this coming week's prayer sessions and let's use this month of march um, as a time to stand at the gap to touch and agree to intercede and to really frame our lives with the word of god amen amen so from the gambizas it's a wrap see you soon bye we call